Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Five Bytes. I'm Yukai Chow, and today we're gonna talk about applications of the Vive Focus 3. And we know the Vive Focus 3 is a VR headset built ground up for business and enterprise uses. A lot of companies don't really know or understand how they can use VR or the potential of how VR can transfer their business. So I'm here to just quickly go over some most popular use cases and you can figure out if your business needs VR or not. So the first one is remote collaboration and actually made lots of content about remote collaboration. We know that when you collaborate with people, a lot of things are important, right? Obviously transformation of information, building that trust and chemistry, reading people's social cues and faces, and just really everything that relates to social that you appreciate in real life is useful. Nowadays, whether it's because of unfortunate events happening around the world or because just different offices are collaborating, the need of remote collaboration is huge. And so therefore, a lot of times, if you just send text or email, you don't really get the human connection. A lot of times, even with the Zoom, just 2D images, you see each other, but that's about it. So what VR can bring to remote collaboration is first, number one, some of the information can be better. You can discuss 3D objects, manipulate them and look at them, discuss 3D models, go into a building made with VR and talk about it, look at a car. And so you can discuss these things and you can talk to each other in a great way. And you can also build chemistry. So if you look at our Vive Sync collaboration software, if you put your hands together, you can shake your hands. There'll be a little magical aura around your handshake. And then also, you will feel a little vibration haptic on your VR controllers. Sometimes you can give people high fives, you can see them sitting down, standing up. You can do all these things, which will facilitate not just with the information transfer remote collaboration, but also the trust building, the facial cues, and the empathetic VR experience that we keep saying is the most important in VR. There's a lot of use cases in therapy and rehabilitation, right? A lot of times therapy is about movement, but also about training your brain, healing your brain, how do you deal with trauma? How do you deal with stress? And I think our minds and our body needs to work hand in hand together to improve and recover from setbacks. And so VR helps you do this by putting people, patients, into a VR environment where it's therapeutic. They're just recovering. In VR, they can kind of see things, go to places that they usually wouldn't be able to. And then they can move their arms, move their legs, whatever they can do in a way that has even corrective feedback and emotional guidance. You can have a VR coach telling you, hey, great, you've hit the spot. You need to raise your arm a little higher, right? So it's giving you motivation, encouragement, as well as corrective feedback, all inside a VR headset connected to the person who can't really go outdoors. So this is one of the very strong use cases. Then the next one is about training and education. So a lot of times, the best way to learn is be immersive. We all know if you want to learn language, you probably should be in that country. And so if you are immersed in that training environment, whether you're in a warehouse, a factory, you're operating machinery, if you feel like you're there in front of you and you face some crisis, you can deal with it more, you can train your muscle memories better. So when you're actually in the real environment, when these crises happens, you don't have to think back, oh, what does the manual say? What was my training? Because you feel like you've already been there, you've been immersed in that environment. You've dealt with these crises before and you know how to keep calm. And we see lots of applications besides warehouse. We have firemen training where every time they create a scene in VR and do this training, they save $10,000. Then we have design and marketing visualization. And so this is basically where if people are doing 3D designs of cars, refrigerators, of buildings, we can use this to create models in 3D, look at it, play with it. Obviously it's very efficient. So it's much better than a computer monitor that's a 2D screen. But of course also marketing visualization comes along with that because if you've made these assets in 3D in the VR world, then your customers can go into VR and look at those items in 3D too. So it allows people to visualize what you've created in VR in 3D because other times you see a flat photo and it's just a 2D image. People don't even know what, what's behind, you know, that's like the other side of the moon, right? They don't even know what's, what's there where they haven't seen it before. And uh, finally, there's some things like location-based experiences where you put on a VR headset and you can go exploring. You can be at a museum, you can be in the jungle, it can be underwater. So it's making an experience much more interesting when you're at a location. You can create different escape rooms with VR. Those are the handful of VR applications for business. And there's definitely a lot more, but those are the prominent ones. And we fully encourage all the companies out there to innovate and figure out new ways to use VR to transform your business. All right, that's all for today. Thank you very much. This is Yukai Chow, signing off.